I have an image here that uh, somebody was requesting um, information on how to convert it to vector. And so the first thing I did was went ahead and saved it to my desktop. Now I'm using freehand, which is very similar to um, you know, CorelDRAW, Adobe Illustrator, things of that nature. So um, I'm going to go ahead and place the image. And let me just go ahead and oh, I must have hit save instead. And then we're just going to go ahead and go to my desktop where I know I saved it. And just go ahead and place it in here. Now uh, with this this font here, it looks like there's a lot of hard edges and curves. So I'm just going to draw a, a guide here. Now in freehand, I've got it set to snap to guides. And uh, you can go under view, snap to point, and then uh, turn your page rulers on if it's not already on, and then snap to guides. That way when I draw something, it's going to snap it right to this guide here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and draw a square. I'll make it a little bit larger than this uh, C. And I'm going to turn my uh, point, my stroke down to a tenth of a point. That way I can see uh, what, it, what it is that uh, we're drawing. And if I go ahead and uh, deselect, let's, let's just change it all to a tenth of a point. Okay. I can go ahead and actually let me close this window. I don't really need that right now. Now in freehand, I can hold in um, my option key. I think on a PC it should be like an alt key. And then just click the point and drag, and you can see it's going to create this little curve here. Now I can duplicate it or clone it in place and then just uh, again hold in the option key or the alt key and um, just uh, move that down in. Now I'm going to take these and I'm going to join them together which is an Apple key and the J key on the Mac. And I'm going to just draw another square on the edge of the C and then select the bottom image. Now this this big rectangle is on top so if I go to my punch tool it's, the top element is going to punch the bottom. And Again we're just going to do the same thing. Um, we're just going to go ahead and draw and then duplicate a couple here and select that and then, and then let me close this window here and I'm going to duplicate this width, this line width here and then we're just going to select this H and then we're going to union them. So now it's one element. If I go into my key line mode, you can see the CH and the I. Or, I'm sorry, just the, the square here. Again, we're going to rotate that. We'll bring it over, duplicate it over. Now I'm going to unjoin these elements here. Or ungroup it. And I'm just going to pull this down in. Again, we're going to do the same thing here. And if I double cl click on it, I can rotate it around. And now I have my point. If I click and drag, there's actually a point um, that it's going to um, snap to. So I'm going to choose both of these and then I'm going to snap to this bottom point as well. That way we have the same angle. Take these, join them together. And when you join two lines together, it's going to join at one end, but it's not going to close up. So we're just going to go into our object properties and choose close. And then again, select all three elements here and union. Now the, um, the H is probably going to be a little bit higher than this E, but um, you still have the same thick, you should have the same thickness. Uh, the lettering. So we're just going to draw this H here and then this C we're going to take another line uh, for the guide and then we're going to use those to um, show our height on the E. Now it does appear as if 
the eaves a little bit thicker on the top so let me go ahead and um, let me unjoin this and then we're just going to move this back here so I'll go ahead and just uh, move this line back out again I must not have my line my guides up on the top there we go so we'll just move these out of the way again and I'm going to click in the upper corner which means that I will click on the point and then click and drag and um, duplicate that image here we'll select them all in union again now the more points you have on the line the the more um, memory it's going to take so I usually just go in and clean up any kind of extra points that may have been created by the objects touching each other and it looks like I may have forgot my rectangle so I'll just click and drag this H deselect the E and then delete those here now I have my I and let's zoom back in here after we take this C over so you can see the C and the D should be the same and we'll take this E over and we'll take this I as well so we're going to take this C and just rotate it uh, it does not look the same so again we'll just take this I over here for the thickness of the left side and then we'll just go ahead and draw once again a rectangle hold in the option key duplicate and we're gonna again hold in the uh, option key and we're just gonna close that up a little bit select those join them together and if we wanted to draw another square or rectangle on top of that and punch grab both elements now and union and we're just gonna delete any extra points we created and the more points you have on even on a curve the choppier the curves gonna be so you can see on this curve the way it was created was there's a point here and a point here So we're going to go ahead and zoom in over here on the R. Let me just move this back out of the way. And again, we're going to do the same thing for this R as we did for the D and the C. And you can see it can go fairly quickly. So we'll just take those join them together, draw another square, punch, and then I'm going to take a line starting here and just drag and draw it out. Now sometimes the R's are not parallel. One might have a little uh, deeper angle on it. Uh, in this case they did appear to be parallel so we'll just go ahead and use the same line and then we're going to select all three objects, join, or union and delete extra points. Now as for the flames, it's just more of using your uh, your pen tool. Now it does appear that this flame is an opposite of this side, the left side and the right side, so I'm just going to draw a line approximately in the center and then I'm going to um, just start drawing now I can select individual nodes here now if it's someone's logo then you want to try to get it as precise as you can and sometimes it's a little difficult to do when you're um, you know you're using uh, like a really small image like this but it, this, this image is clear enough that you should be okay so we're just going to go ahead and finish this line up. And again, using that same principle with the less uh, nodes you use, the smoother the curve's going to be. Okay, now we have that, and we're going to go ahead and close. And now 
using my um, reflect tool I'm going to put it with this other element selected I'm going to put it right on this center line and then hold in the alt and or the option key and the shift key and you can see that uh, it is pretty close so it's off a little but so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and um, select both of these union them and then I'm just going to shift over uh, individual lines since that's probably what they did because it looks very similar but a lot of times um, companies that draw logos will put subtle differences um, so it's harder to duplicate uh, so that you have to go back to them to get the artwork and then they can kind of keep track of it a little bit better. Uh, but with the tools today that's kind of a, a practice that doesn't really uh, fly anymore. So, But I do know when I was in uh, school I went to the Art Institute of Pittsburgh and when I went to school that was with typesetting and so forth that was one of the tricks that my instructors taught me um, but a lot of times the computers were just uh, at that time were really becoming popular with lettering and we were still drawing all our letters by hand uh, with the rapidograph and uh, triangle and, and all that. But it's just interesting to see how quickly things have progressed um, and uh, the computers can pretty much duplicate just about anything anymore within the right, uh, using the right tools. And uh, so we'll just go ahead and take both of these elements now and union them. And we have our flames. I'll just go ahead and uh, delete all of our guides. Now to try to find this color, um, depending on your program, they all should uh, work similar. But I'm going to go ahead and delete um, any colors that I have in my palette here. And then I'm just going to grab my eyedropper tool and click and drag into the palette. Now I have the color that I need. And then at the same time, I'm just going to uh, just move this out of the way so we can compare colors. Join everything together, turn off a black line, and turn on this other color. And there you have it. And now you can see that there's a real nice crisp edge here. And if I wanted to enlarge this, um, I can go ahead and do that. And you can see even in uh, the key line mode, you can see how nice and crisp the edges are. And uh, you can make these points if you want, but a lot of times um, if you're going to vinyl cut this or screen print it, you're going to lose your points anyway. So quite often I'll just put a curve on the sharp points. Um, now this is different because you have a 90 degree angle, um, but in, in when, when two uh, lines come to a real sharp point, they you said you're going to lose that almost all the time in this form of printing. So we just go ahead and curve it out in the advance. And that would be um, how to redraw a logo using freehand or similar vector programs.